Welcome to the Dream Ethos. Frequently, we'll hear founders say, we're looking for smart money, you know, value-added investors. That's a nice soundbite, but what does that really mean? And how do you avoid the majority of investors who will add little to no value, or even worse, negative value? Let's dive in. Dream It Ventures has been investing in great early stage startups for over a decade. The Dream It Dose allows us to share best practices to help even more founders. Tell us about your great startup using the links below. First, let's define what I mean by smart money. In my view, the minimum definition of smart money is when the added value is at least equal to the cash invested. So an investor writes a check for $500,000. That means they need to add at least another half a million dollars in value. There's also a rarefied class of investors, we'll call them super investors, who deliver 10x the value in proportion to their check size. Super investors are what you wanna aim for. What's a smart investor doing to add so much value? They deliver killer, impactful warm intros to customers or partners, introduce you to great potential new hires, help you secure your next round of funding, help navigate a regulatory minefield, or share knowledge and experience that shaves months or years off your path to success. One other way we see huge value delivered, it's not always having the answer. Often it's knowing the right insightful question to ask, questions that help you discover a more intelligent, faster, and more efficient way forward. In a moment, we'll go through a litmus test to help judge if an investor will be smart. But first, let's talk about two things, your cap table and marriage. Did you know they're tightly linked? When you take money from an investor, realize you're getting married to them in a sense. What do I mean? This is someone who will be your partner for a long, long time. How long? Assume an early investor will be with you for a minimum of five and frequently more like seven to 10 years. There are startups that I've invested in and worked with for over 10 years. So as you contemplate beginning the investor startup relationship, you know, marriage, step back and ask yourself or an advisor or existing investor, through all the ups and downs my startup will go through, and trust me, there will be downs, is this someone I can work with for the next decade? Unlike marriage, you can't divorce an investor. Next, let's talk about how you should consider the key milestones you're looking to hit over your next few rounds. So not just this round, but think a round or two ahead. Why? The definition of smart money can change over time. For example, an early stage angel investor may be great in the beginning, but add little to no value in a later round when you're getting ready to IPO, do a SPAC, or get through a complex M&A process. So talk to smart money investors who've worked with companies at your stage and helped them achieve similar upcoming milestones, and optimally, investors who have also built companies themselves. There's also an issue with bringing in investors that focus on late stage companies if you're still early. You think they're smart money, but it turns out they're not smart on the near-term issues you will face. Are you bringing in an investor who typically does private equity, late-stage deals into your very early seed round? Have they successfully helped early-stage companies? Someone who has decades of experience growing companies from 100 million to a billion in revenue, but has never built a company from scratch, may not have the sage smart money guidance you need. Just make sure you have realistic expectations for the value they can add. So let's talk about that litmus test I mentioned earlier. The first two we've already covered. What is your company's stage and is the investor a good match for that? What key milestones do you need to hit? And does the investor have experience hitting them? Beyond these, let's hit 15 more litmus test items to help gauge if an investor will be a smart fit for you. Are you B2B, B2C, D2C, B2G? As you look for smart money, make sure to align to investors who have experience similar to the market approach you are taking. An example, if they're great at building B2B companies, their skills and knowledge often don't translate well to B2C or D2C companies. Why? They come from a totally different mindset around marketing, customer acquisition, channel strategies, and more. What help do you feel you need from a marketing point of view? Can they deliver? What about PR? Do they have significant experience and connections you can leverage? If you're doing R&D intensive work, what's their expertise in that area? Maybe your top issue is product development. Do they have the smarts here? If your big challenge will be supply chain or distribution, can they be helpful? Do you have challenging regulatory issues? For example, the FDA, FCC, or FAA, where they can provide guidance and expertise? Often a top issue is dramatically ramping up sales. What's their experience? If partnerships are critical, how can they help? 
may be critical to you are legal and financial issues. How can they assist and what great connections can they offer? Do they have hands-on experience building companies? So not just book smart, but they've been in the trenches helping to build and scale. What's their experience in your vertical? Do they have passion for your space, product, business model, and industry? Are they aligned with your long-term vision and goals? And how great are they at critical thinking? As mentioned earlier, they don't always need to have the answer, but do they ask the right questions that help you unlock deeply insightful thinking on your part? Okay, so you think you have a great investor that's smart money and you've applied the litmus test, but how can you be sure? Just like you would reference check a potential employee, reference check your investors. Ask investors for several references. Before you reach out to those references, pick the top two to three reasons you think an investor will be smart money and probe those references around the reasons. Don't ask open-ended, non-specific questions like, did the investor add value? Get into detail here. For example, if you're betting the investor will add a ton of value on how to scale sales, make sure you speak to a few founders to confirm they were helpful in this area. Two other things to think about when reference checking your potential smart money investor. One, ask the founder, if you had to do it all over, would you partner with this investor again? And second, ask for founder references where there was not a good outcome. The company failed. Find out if the investor still added values in the ways you're expecting. And most importantly, ask the founder how the investor behaved when the chips were down. It's always easy for an investor to look smart when everything is going well, but you earn your stripes when the chips are down and there's big problems. Moving on, one slick way to get high value ROI from a handful of smart investors, when putting your round together, carve out a portion for smaller check size investors who can add outsized value. For example, let's say you're doing a small $3 million round and you carve out a portion to get five $50,000 investors. So now you're amping up the number of people, smarts, and connections around you to help drive your startup to success more quickly. The final item I wanna cover, what if you don't have a choice or are not looking for value-added investors? So you just need to take the money where you can get it. Here are a few things to keep in mind. Remember, they will be on your cap table till death do you part. While they may not add value, make sure they will not be value destroying. Many investors can be a net negative, We've seen where investors sap a founder's energy, focus, and time. No matter what, still diligence investors. Remember that crucial question to ask other founders. If you had to do it all over, would you take their money again? Okay, that's it. That's how you figure out if someone is really going to be smart money. First, smart money means they add at least 2x the value and try to find super smart money that delivers 10x the value. Second, Remember, particularly for early investors, you're getting married for most likely seven to 10 plus years. Third, make sure you're talking to the right investor based on the stage of your company. Fourth, use our litmus test to measure how an investor can be smart for you. Fifth, make sure to diligence an investor, and while doing so, talk to founders that did not have a good outcome. Sixth, carve out part of your round for a pool of smaller check size investors who can add outsized value. And finally, seventh, if you can't be choosy, no matter what, make sure to diligence your investors. That's it, that's your Dream It Dose. Please leave your questions in the comments section. If you found this video valuable, please like and subscribe. We have a lot more coming. To see all of our doses, go to dreamit.com slash dose. See you next time. If you found this video valuable, Come on. Fifth, make sure to diligence as you look for smart money. Make sure to align to investors who have experience similar to the emoji. What help do they feel they need? What help do you feel? Don't don't die now. These are simple. That was